Need LASIK? Trust the experienced team at the LASIK Center at Evergreen Eye Center. No glasses, no contacts, no limits. What will you do? LASIK at evergreen.com. Moving 92.5. Brooke and Jubal's second date update. The girl on the phone for a second date update today is shocked that a guy is not calling her back after he went on a date with her. Whoa. Why? Because in her own words, according to her email, she has never been blown off by a guy ever. What? Uh, and that's okay. why they call her Sure Thing Amanda. Sure Thing Amanda <laughs> is on the phone with us. What's up, Sure Thing? I don't think that's what she Hi. Oh, she's fine with it. Okay, I lied. Is, do they actually call you that? I, I just made that up. No, but I'm fine with it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm just going to call you Sure Thing from now on. So you said that this is the first time you've ever been blown off by a guy and not gotten a second date. Yep, this is the first time. How oh. is that possible? That's what I'm saying. I don't know how it's possible. No, no, that's not what I meant. I meant how have you never been blown up? I don't know. Just never had that happen to me before. And so this wow. must be a very confusing time in your life, and I'm yeah. sorry about that, Amanda. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the guy that you want us to call today. What's his name? His name is Jimmy. Okay, Jimmy. So uh, this is the story. So one morning I was getting coffee before work. Mm-hmm. And I left the shop, and some guy, you know, ran outside after me, and he was like, you forgot this. And I turned around, and he had a comb in his hand. And I was like, what? That's not mine. And he was like, I know, I know. I just needed something to get your attention. I just wanted to talk to you. Oh, Oh. okay. So it was a little (laughs) trick to try to talk to you. So he showed you his dirty, bacteria-ridden comb that he had in his pocket. (laughs) Well, I thought it was funny, you know, it was, it was, you know, clever, whatever. Are you someone who often gets chased down in parking lots for dates? Not chased down, but, you know, guys ask me out. Yeah. So, nice. you know, we got to talking, and he seemed cool, and mm-hmm. he, that's when he asked me to hang out. And I said, well, I have work right now, um, but he asked for my number, so I gave it to him, and we texted for a few days, and... Facebook him, you know, did the background check, all of that. Yeah. Right. So you did your due diligence to find out if he's a perv or not. <laughs> right, exactly. So uh he seemed cool, so we set a time to, you know, hang out for a date and we went to dinner. How was dinner? Was everything cool? Well, everything was good except for one part that was a little bit weird. Um <laughs> I told him I used to be a dancer. Oh. Nice. That's what I'm now talking about. I know why no. you're always getting calls back. I get it. Not that kind of dancer. I dance for a sports team. I used to dance for a sports team. Oh, so. okay. Uh, still. Well, that's not the, quite the caliber of dancer I was hoping for. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Maybe he's not calling you back because you're not that kind of dancer. Though. Well, but when I told him, he got this weird look after I said it, kind of like you guys did when I told you for the first time. <laughs> It's understandable. And that's when I was like, oh, no, no, not that type of dancer. I used to dance for a sports team. Yeah. (laughs) But then he seemed skeptical, like he didn't really believe me. So, I don't know, maybe he thought I was covering up that I really was that kind of dancer. (laughs) Is that why you think he's not calling you back? Because Because he thinks you're a stripper? (laughs) I don't know. It could be. It's the only thing I can think of. Are you insulted that a man thinks that you are a stripper? No, I mean, I told him the truth. Can I ask you a question, Amanda? Yeah? You don't sound like you're really that into this guy. Do you want to just do a second date update because he's the only guy never to call you back? Kind of, yeah. (laughs) I don't blame you. That's fine. I I am all for that. It's weird when somebody doesn't, you know, call you back after a date. Yeah, I mean, I don't even need a second date. I just want to know why he called me. I mean, is that okay that I still do this? Yeah, absolutely. It is. Why don't you tell us how everything ended with him? Well, he gave me a kiss on the cheek, Uh and we went our separate ways. Did you make any plans for a future date? No, he said, you know, I'll call you. Have you tried texting him? No, I haven't texted him. Oh, yeah, you'd never do something like that. (laughs) Well, I'm waiting for him to text me. But maybe, I mean, maybe he just caught on to the fact that you're not really that interested in him, and so he thought, why even put the energy in? I don't care. I just want to know why he's not calling me back. (laughs) Okay. How long has it been, then, since your date? Since you haven't reached out to him, you're just waiting for him to call. It hasn't been, like, a day or anything, has it? 
No, it's been like two weeks. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's an official blow off then. Yeah. yeah. This is the first time this has ever happened to me, and I can't figure it out. <laughs> okay, well, we'll play a song, come back, call him, and get your second date update, all right? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hang on. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the stage, <laughs> Amanda. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> greet her, fellas. She's working for you. She wants a second date update because the guy she went out with won't call her back, and she is so upset. Okay. And she's about to take it out for everybody to see. <laughs> Get your ones out. Amanda's taking center stage and going to show us how a second date update is really done. Yeah. Isn't that right, Amanda? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I introing Amanda like that? Well, because she's a dancer. Yeah. Unfortunately, she's not that kind of dancer. Yeah. But she thinks that the guy isn't calling her back because during their date, she was like, I'm a dancer. And then he gave her a weird look. Like you always hear when somebody just says they're a dancer, you're like, I know what that means. Uh-huh. And then she explained that she wasn't that kind of dancer, but she feels like maybe he didn't believe her. That's the only thing she can think of as to why he wouldn't be calling her back. She did also say that she's never been blown off by a guy before, ever. This is yeah. the first guy never to call her and ask for a second date. And that's more important to her than even getting the second date. She just wants to know <laughs> why this is the one guy who wouldn't call her back. Amanda? Yep. You ready to get this thing going? I'm ready. And if he says that's something... That's right, she okay. is. Oh, Amanda is always ready. Right. She lives by the motto, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. And we're ready for some hot second date action. <laughs> It's, you've been moonlighting as a strip club DJ, haven't you? I want that job so uh -huh. bad. <laughs> okay, sorry, Brooke. You were saying something to Amanda before I started the music. Yeah, I mean, if it comes back that maybe he's just been out of town for the last two weeks and there's a totally reasonable explanation, are you actually going to turn him down at that point? I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you sound actually pissed that this guy's not calling you back. Yeah. I am. I just want to know, like, of all the guys that I've dated, why is it this guy that's not calling me back? You... What reason does he have? Well, I'm going to dial the phone number right now and get him on the phone and see if we can find out why, okay? Sounds good. Okay. Hello? Hi, can I speak to Jimmy, please? Yeah, this is Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy, how are you? This is Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning. Who? <laughs> Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning, the radio program. Why is the radio program calling me? Well, because one of our listeners actually emailed us and asked if we could get you on the phone. Her name is Amanda, and you recently took her out on a date. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, That's so Amanda <laughs> emailed us and told us about your date, and she also said she really liked you a lot, and uh -huh. she's wondering why you're not calling her back. She said it's been like two weeks since you guys went out. She's been hoping you would call to ask her on a second date, but she's heard nothing, and she's wondering is there? I bet she did. Whoa! You what did bet you just she say? Did. I said I bet she did. <laughs> why do you say it like that? Well. Amanda is, uh, uh, oh boy, Amanda is, uh, she's something else. Um, um, we, we talked to her, just to let you know, we talked to her. She told us about meeting you. Thought it was really cool the I'm way sure you... she did. <laughs> um, she didn't sound like uh, anything that, I mean, you... Can I, you say, man, can I say she's a real pisser on the air? Sure, <laughs> what do you mean by that? Like, she had, a, like, problems... She's a nightmare. She's, she's a, a nightmare? nightmare? Did you say she's a nightmare? Yeah. She was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Why is she a nightmare? Well, what did she tell you? She just said you guys went out to dinner and had some yeah. good conversation, ended the date with a kiss on the cheek, and she was hoping to hear from you again. That's it, pretty much it. Yeah, well, let's look, okay. Amanda is a very attractive woman, uh, <laughs> but I could tell everything about her from... Uh, her food order. What do you mean? Like she's a vegetarian and you just can't stand those people? Like I, I feel the same. Oh, it's a lot worse than that. Okay, well what like, could be worse? So much worse? What did she do just ordering food that pissed you off enough to like call her a pisser or whatever? Well, let me give you a blow-by-blow -blow description. She started off by asking for bottled water, no ice. 
and it couldn't be tap water. <laughs> okay. That's the problem where she explained all this to the waiter. Okay. Why is that so offensive to you, though? Oh, that's not offensive. That was just the opening salvo. <laughs> okay. All right. It got worse from there. Then she explained that she had certain dietary restrictions. Like? She couldn't eat any red meat. Okay. No gluten. No dairy. No <laughs> fish that swim. What? <laughs> but crab No fish fine. that swim? Oh, <laughs> you know, like... Yeah. I let that sink in. So no gluten, <laughs> no dairy, no fish that swim. But she's a picky eater, obviously. Yeah, I, I even asked her. I said, "What do you mean, fish that swim?" Oh, so she and she made this little wavy motion with her hand. You know, fish that swim. I said, "Yeah, I know, fish that swim. Don't all fish swim?" Said, no, no. You know, there's some little fish that walk around. You know, like like. Shrimp, lobsters, anything with little bitty legs are okay. <laughs> is is okay. that just because she like has like an allergy or something? I oh, who knows? Um, <laughs> I thought you were just I thought you were just saying it like as a figure of speech when you were talking fish that swims. I didn't realize that was the exact words that came out of her mouth. No, she actually said fish that swims. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was gonna just take it at face value, but she went on to explain to me that fish that swim have a higher mercury content, and so if you eat fish that swim, you're slowly killing yourself. <laughs> you sound really upset about this. I wanted to eat a whole fish right then. <laughs> okay, so is it... I, all right, so she's a picky eater. I've never heard the fish that swim thing before. Why yeah, not either. Why not go out with her on a second date, though? Is that the only bad thing? Well, wasn't that enough? I don't this, know. I mean, it's... Is high. Maintenance. Okay, yeah. it's a high maintenance issue. Can I ask, because I'm just curious, what did she end up ordering for dinner? I don't know, some sort of salad <laughs> with water so, dressing. You know something about her? Water dressing. <laughs> with water dressing. So we talked to her about your date, and she didn't mention her dietary restrictions. But she did also say, you're the only guy that has ever not called her back for a second date. You know that? Yeah. That's kind of hard for me to believe. I can't imagine all the other guys in her life have put up with that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what, Jimmy? Thank you for being honest with us, man. I appreciate it. No problem. Okay, and now I feel like I must be honest with you because Amanda is actually on the other line listening to this conversation. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> yeah, I am here, and I'm hearing what you're saying about me. <laughs> oh. Hey, Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> I care about what goes in my body, and obviously you don't. <laughs> it's not high No, I, I was caring about what went in your body in a completely different way than <laughs> what you were thinking. Oh, sir. <laughs> Thank you for taking the words out of my mouth, Jimmy. Wow, I was hoping Jimmy. I didn't have to make that joke. <laughs> You're a jerk. Dude, Jimmy, I, I will say, to stand up for her, what do you expect? The hottest girl you've ever seen to then go down a cheeseburger? Thank you. can't you. have that body that she probably has and also mow down on cheese fries all the time. Look, haven't you ever heard the phrase, no matter how hot she is, there's some guy that's just tired of her sh**? Yes, I For your information, I didn't even want a second date. I literally just wanted this to happen to find out why you didn't call me back, why you were such a jerk. Obviously, I'm the hottest girl that you've ever gone out with, so that's for you. Look, I'm not going to lie. You're very hot, okay? But uh, And I totally sleep with you once, but I just don't want to eat with you again. Oh, my gosh. Well, that leads me to my question. Jimmy, would you like to go on a second date with Amanda? There will be no eating. Oh, you hell got... no. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, you guys, I, I would pay for you guys to go to dinner, but you don't even have to do no, that. You can just sleep no. together once. <laughs> not interested either, Amanda, huh? No, I'm not. What? Yeah, you're not missing out there, Amanda, Weird. whatsoever. Clearly. You know what? You're just a low-class jerk, and you obviously can't handle a Whoa. woman like me. Whoa. I don't want to handle a woman like you. I'd rather handle a woman that eats fish, that swims. <laughs> And by the way, I don't care what you think, all fish swim. <laughs> well, this was definitely not a successful second date update, but we can try to answer the question on our text message board, 78592. Do all fish swim? Text it in. There's something way more important going on now. Broken Jubal in the morning.
Now there's just a big debate on the text message board at 78592 about if fish swim or not. If there are fish that don't swim. A lot of people are saying dead fish don't swim, they float. That's, That's very true. Point. Some people say starfish <laughs> don't swim. We're talking about it because of the second date update. If you missed today's second date update, this girl named Amanda went out with a dude named Jimmy. And there was a weird moment on the date where she told him that she was a dancer and he gave her a weird look because... She thought maybe he thought she was a special kind of dancer, yeah. <laughs> but she's not that kind of dancer. She thought he might have gotten the wrong idea, though, and that's why he wasn't calling back. But we got him on the phone, and Jimmy said he was turned off by her picky food ordering. She asked for no gluten, no dairy, and no fish that swim. Mm -hmm. there's, a lot of, there's a crustacean battle that's happening right now. Yeah. yeah. If it doesn't swim, it's a crustacean, according to a lot of people. But so it's not like lobsters, they swim. They can just push themselves along, kind of. So I, there's a, yeah. it's, it is a debate. Apparently, she only eats sea creatures with legs. Shrimps, lobsters, things like that, <laughs> that don't swim. But I will not eat any fish that swim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Jimmy thought she was just too high maintenance yeah. and did not want another date with her. And you know he's Googling a lot of things about fish right now. Like, what? I mean, is she even right? Like, what's happening with yeah. this fish? But I understand that, you know, not wanting to go out with someone who's that picky of an eater, you can't sure. ever go anywhere. Or if you yeah. do go somewhere, it's just like, just, two... just, just, she's going to order a salad. Yeah. yeah every, <laughs> you know, every single time. Well, she should, right? Like, if, if she's that picky, then that's what you stick to. Somebody texted and says starfish actually do swim. But are starfish considered fish, or are they considered, like, are they a crustacean? They got know. fish in the name. Someone says the yeah, bat fish Yeah, but I think walks. that there's a lot of things with fish in the name that doesn't make that doesn't make it a fish. What do you mean? We are so scientific. It's like, <laughs> how are we not yeah, on National Geographic right now? Some people saying and right shrimp do swim. Jeez, so, the conversation on the text is amazing But I don't right think now. lobsters and, sh and shrimp are fish. Does a what? crustacean count as a fish? If it lives in the sea, I don't is think it a so. Fish? I think a fish and a crustacean are different. I don't know. Anyway, all I know is that today's second date update has opened up a whole discussion that I think <laughs> is very important and that we need to have. Remember, if you want to do a second date update, all you have to do is email the show and we will call the person that didn't call you back. Moving 92.5's. It is the radio segment that would like you to keep it down because it's still asleep. Laser <laughs> Stories, the segment where we read weird news stories from around the globe, just like every other radio show does, except we have a laser, and those other idiots don't. This first laser story is out of Columbus, Ohio. A guy named David Menser robbed four banks over the past month, but on the third one, he ran into a bit of a problem. Mm. He went into a Huntington Bank branch and told the teller that he had a gun and he wanted money. Okay. Ain't nobody got time for that. Teller gave him some cash, uh -huh. but David demanded more. Uh -oh, so the teller ready. told him that they needed a driver's license to get the machine to give more cash. <laughs> and David believed that yeah. and handed over his license. How smart. <laughs> no, that is so dumb. I mean, smart of the teller, yes. That's what I meant. But you think that you, the bank, the robber would be like, no, just use your driver's license to open it. Right? So afterwards, <laughs> David left with the money and the teller passed along all the information from his ID. <laughs> to the cops. Fast forward two weeks later, and the police went to his house mm. and arrested David. Oh. So wow. why did they wait two weeks, especially since yes. David robbed another bank in between that? Well, apparently the cops couldn't believe that somebody would give their real license to the teller during a robbery, so they initially dismissed it. Like, yeah, that's obviously a fake license. There's no way. Yeah, regardless, David was eventually caught and will be going away for a very long time. <laughs> Like, that's, that's ridiculous. Nobody would actually give their own license. We're not even going to investigate that. And the teller's just like, hey, guys, I, I swear it's real. <laughs> this next social story is out of Canada. Hakim and Abiola Nosiru are originally from Nigeria, but they lived outside of Toronto for the past 17 years. And a little while ago, the lucky couple hit the Canadian lottery for $50 million. Oh, my gosh. Oh my gosh. But after uh, the currency exchange, it's only like why is 20 it, bucks, right? It's still so shocking to hear that every time. For some reason, Hakeem was so worried about losing the ticket, he put it in an envelope oh, no. and then duct taped it to his stomach. What? <laughs> Shoot, I would do the okay. same, yo. But yep. after a few days, he didn't even trust himself because he had to keep taking it off to shower, so he gave it to his wife, who put it in her purse. Oh, no. Then no. they went to church the next day, and afterwards, she looked for it, and the lottery ticket was gone. No. Oh my god, my hands are Oh my sweaty. god. They turned are the house divorced? upside down, 
went through their trash, but they still didn't find it. And eventually, they had to face the fact that it was probably gone for good. Oh, my God. Luckily, Hakeem had already signed the ticket and filled in his address. And two months after they lost it, somebody from their church said that they found it on the ground <gasps> in the sanctuary. What? And then gave it back to them. Oh, my God. Some money for sure. It probably right, took yeah, two months yeah, because yeah, they were yeah. trying to figure out how to change him signing it on the back and everything else. And they're like, ah, I can't do it. So I guess I'll give it back to him. <laughs> they got their big novelty check recently and they're planning to travel a lot and also help their four kids and five grandkids. No word on if they plan to give the person that found the ticket and gave it back to him any money, but I hope yeah. they do. They give me like 20 bucks. Here's 20 bucks. Thank you. Do you know any fights they would have gotten in in that two month period right. about the lost ticket? <laughs> This next laser story is out of Bensalem, Pennsylvania. A guy tried to steal a pickup truck out of a driveway last week. It had the keys inside, so the only thing standing in his way was a car behind it in the driveway. Mm. But there was one huge problem with that. The thief apparently could not pull off a three-point turn to get around the other car. <laughs> A surveillance video <laughs> shows that he kept trying but ended up banging into the car until he eventually gave up and ran off. <laughs> Authorities are trying to track him down, and they say they can't remember a time when a thief was foiled by something as basic as being able to do a three-point turn. Yeah, and it sounds like it banged up the other car. Like, insurance is not going to go for that. So someone tried to steal my car, but yeah. couldn't. It's like just like Austin Powers in that movie where yeah. he's trying yeah. to turn around. Oh, yeah. He's in the hallway, yeah. <laughs> This next laser story is out of Chulata, Florida. 24-year-old Andrew James Joffe, that's a cool name, Andrew James Joffe, broke into a house last week and stole some cell phones, earrings, and a GPS device, oh, and then he took off running. <laughs> However, it was dark, and Andrew doesn't really know the area, and at some point he also got scared because oh. it was nighttime and he was pretty sure wild hogs might be chasing him. Oh, man. So he decided he needed help, and he called the cops to tell them that he was lost. Don't! When police showed up, Andrew admitted to the crime, and cops asked why he didn't just use the stolen GPS to get out of there. Mm -hmm. He said he panicked, and it didn't even occur to him that he had just stolen a GPS unit. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea. So they ran his name and found that he had an outstanding warrant for driving with a suspended license as well. Afterwards, a police spokesman said, quote, in his defense, it does get pretty dark out there in the middle of the night. Yeah. But here's the thing. If you're scared of the dark, you probably shouldn't be a robber. Yeah. yeah. You should steal things during the day. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a little safer for you. This next story is out of State Fair Headquarters. If you've been to a state fair in the past decade or so, you've come face to face with deep fried Oreos. Creamy. Mm -hmm. For sure. So also, really rickety old carnival rides, pig beauty contests, and an endless sea of worst homemade tattoos that you've ever seen. <laughs> but That's so true. Mainly the Oreos. Well, you don't need to go to a state fair to get them anymore. Remember a few years ago when Hostess started selling deep fried Twinkies in the freezer section at your grocery stores? Yeah. Well, I'm happy to announce that Oreos selling state fair cookies. Hey. And that's coming to Walmarts everywhere very soon. All well, right. Because we're too lazy to deep fry our own Oreos. <laughs> they come in two versions with a vanilla covering or a chocolate covering. You heat them up in the microwave so we don't know if they'll be as good as the real thing. But it's worth a shot if you want some deep fried Oreos at home. It sounds like a, like a chocolate Pop-Tart to me. I'm into it. This next laser story is out of Wedding World. A new survey by The Knot found that asking for cash on wedding registries is a lot more popular than it used to be. Mm. About 50% more common last year than it was just two years ago. Oh, so really? why are So what are they spending money on? The honeymoon is still the most common thing that couples ask people to help fund. Yeah, mm. of course. Followed by a down payment on a house. But the wedding itself was number three last year. Big ticket items like appliances were number four and help paying off debt was number five. Hmm. On average, couples who did ask for cash last year got a total of $1,437 from their wedding guests. Oh, that's awesome. It's pretty so good. So your wedding cost thirty grand, and you recouped a little bit. Yeah. Should <laughs> help with not even the taxes. Yeah, but, and that almost and you bought something. your dress. The paper the flowers. Yeah. <laughs> this next laser story is out of the study of old age. A new study out of the University of Miami found that having wrinkles around your eyes is actually a good thing because it makes you seem more sincere and genuine. Oh. 
Researchers had people look at photos of different expressions. Some of the people in the photos had wrinkles around their eyes, and some didn't. Hmm. And the ones with wrinkles were consistently rated as more sincere. It happened with happy expressions like big smiles and sad expressions too. So it's possible re- wrinkles help convey emotion no matter what the emotion is. So these aren't crow's feet. These are my sincerity marks. Yes. <laughs> the explanation they came up with is pretty simple. Basically, our brains are just pre-wired to view people as more sincere if they have wrinkles around their eyes. Ooh, that's interesting, huh? So stop with the Botox. Yeah. If you want people to take you seriously. Induce wrinkles. Yeah. You need wrinkles around your eyes so people will believe you. Yeah. We all look like Sharpay puppies soon. Soon the Kardashians are going to start putting wrinkles into their face yeah. so that people can think that they're actually sincere. Like they're so fake. And then all of a sudden they put out wrinkly faces. You're like, you know what? I'm starting to like them. Yeah. I'm starting to believe those people. And being seen more sincere, they say, is a good thing because when people feel like they know what you're thinking and feeling, it makes you more trustworthy. So there you go. Just get some wrinkles around your eyes. I trust this guy no matter what. doesn't really matter if he's got wrinkles or not, just as long as he keeps humping that shit. (laughs) That's the sound of a very sincere turtle humping a shoe, which means that Laser Stories has come to an end for the day. We'll do it again same time on Wednesday. Move it, 92.5. Hey, girl, what's up with you? Wait a minute, is this the right number? It's, um, the loser line. Come on, just call me back. If you haven't heard the loser line before, it works like this. Let's just say a guy approaches you while you're out at the club using this specific pickup line. Yeah, what's up? I got a question for you. What's your favorite piece of silverware? (laughs) I like, (laughs) I like spoons. Because we should spoon. That was the longest pickup line that didn't really go anywhere. He's figuring it out as he went along. Yeah. I think. Yeah. It went somewhere. It went to him talking about spooning. But if a guy uses a line like that on you, don't roll your eyes and puke in your mouth. <laughs> Walk away. Just tell him that you think he's witty and that he needs to call you sometime. And that's when you give him the loser line instead. And make sure to say that he needs to call you and not text. And when he does, hopefully, he leaves an awkward voicemail that we can play for you like this one. First unheard message. Yeah, um, I don't know if your name was a t- or a, or t- I don't know because you kind of like wrote your name a little, uh, you kind of scribbled your name real fast. I think you had to leave off. What's your f- um, but yeah, like I like that little conversation, you know, that you gave me and everything. It had, you know, like it had me thinking because, like, I don't handle job no more. You know what I'm saying? So I can, <laughs> you know, I can spend a lot of time, you know, and I can go do different things, you know, and you and you, you know. You look like the type of girl that, um, yeah, that, uh, you know, that you know, you you know what you're doing. Yeah, so, <laughs> just, I'm, you know, I'm fresh up. I'm looking as, you know, good as I did when I came over here with you all your friends. All right, yeah, call me back. All right. Next message. He started out with, I don't remember your name. Here's the two options it could be. Yeah. And I am all currently unemployed. Yeah, don't <laughs> yeah. talk about the unemployed thing. He's trying to wrap it up like, oh, I got a lot of time on my hands now, girl. But no, that's not how no, you No, I just yeah. don't really have a job right now. I just I just, I just cashed my unemployment check, which means we can go to pizza. Yeah, girl, I got like 200 bucks. Don't yeah. worry about it. I mean, you want the number for the loser line? All you have to do is text the word loser to 78592, and we will send you that phone number that you can give to somebody who's hitting on you that you don't want hitting on you. Make sure you tell them to call that number, not text it, so they can leave us voicemails like this one. Next message. Hey, how's it going? I uh, really want to see you. And, uh, but I also have a girlfriend that I didn't tell you about, Whoa. but I think we can make it work. Give me a call later. You know, if I don't answer, I'll call you right back, but... Hopefully, I'll get to see you tonight. Okay? <laughs> if I don't answer, it's probably because I'm with my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> don't leave a message. But yeah, don't leave a message, and I'll just call you back. But just want to let you know I have a girlfriend. I like how he's thinking in his mind, well, honesty is the best policy. Yeah, if I, I just let her know, mm, I'm sure she'll think that, you know. Yeah. You are so sweet. Yeah. You're a sweet Tell talker. Me. <laughs> Here's another message from the loser line. Next message. Hey, this is G- uh, we met the other night, and uh, I just want to make sure I give you a call, see how you were doing. Um, I definitely think that we had a connection. You were the most beautiful woman that I have ever seen. 
you were like a princess walking around in like a pound full of puppies that nobody wants to adopt. What? So, you know, <laughs> I, uh, I'll call you back and hopefully we will get to talk and uh, look forward to it. I will call you later. Next <laughs> message. Pretty creative way to put it. A princess walking around in a pound full of puppies that nobody wants to adopt. <laughs> he called her a dog. <laughs> yeah. Is that what yeah, it is? And, and the best of dogs that people don't like. Yeah, that those nobody, are ugly yeah, dogs. <laughs> like, you're the least mangy in the group. <laughs> yeah. Next message. Hey, girl, this is D. You remember me? Two, one, three, oh, two. Come sit on my lap. Girl. Next message. No, that's just a no. No? Not going to happen. Here's another message from the loser line. Next message. Hey, uh, uh, this is, uh, 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 I met you and your sister uh, the other night, uh, at the, uh, had a great time, uh, had a blast da- uh, dancing. Um, anyway, uh, I don't know if you remember, but we uh, kind of had a chat about maybe uh, you and your sister and me kind of uh, hanging out maybe one night at uh, my place. Uh, <laughs> would love uh, to see you guys again and hang out. So give me a call. Uh, I'm around. This is my cell. Okay, bye. Next message. <laughs> you can hear in his mind. He's like, the first time I said it, it may have sound creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The second time, maybe I'll make it sound like I just mean hang out. <laughs> like still the, sounds creepy. I like thinking about the sister's perspective. You know they're totally messing with them. Like, yeah, sure, we'll totally come over. Oh, they're probably definitely. not even real sisters. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Here, take this number. <laughs> Unfortunately, now it's time for the last loser line voicemail of the day. Next message. Oh, man, you can't pick my phone up. Oh, my goodness. I can't even believe you can't pick my phone up. I would call you all day. It's over. <laughs> she got broken up with yeah. on the loser line. How bad is that? <laughs> what you doing at the courthouse is coming up in just a few minutes. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. But before we get to that, it's happened again. Mm. A member of the morning show has stepped out of line, and now it's time for me to take the role of disciplinarian oh, really? and lay down the law. That's right. Oh. What law? So let's bring in our intern, Ijane. So that we can handle this. She's so nice. I She's know, like, I the, like She's so sweet. Well, it's time for me to crack the whip a little bit. Oh, no. What's up, Ajane? Hi. I'm assuming you know why you've been summoned today. No, not really. It sounds like you're in trouble. She's poor thing. Well, it's come to my attention that the other day you overslept and you were late for work. Uh-oh. Oh, did that happen? Can you I deny might. that? I can't not deny that. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Well, you know, when you enter the workforce, you need to take my advice and do what I do to make a good impression on the higher ups. All right. Number one, I always show up to all of my scheduled events. (laughs) No, you don't. Always. And when I show up, I always arrive on time, if not a half hour early, and then I stay late every single time. I've never seen you arrive anywhere on time. Yeah, you show up late, and then you're on your phone the whole time. Well, yeah. that's because I'm there so early that I'm oh, doing other things, God, and then by the time you guys see me, I've already worked at so, least a yeah. good 45 minutes before you got there. Uh-huh. Yeah, I get it, okay. And like Jose said, I make sure to not be on my phone very much. Yeah, okay. When I'm out there working. You'll notice I'm never really on my phone. I barely even bring it to work. Oh, it's like... Like, that's why they call you Mr. Eye Contact. Yes, it here, is. Huh? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Attentive is what they uh, call me. Good old nickname. And my third and final piece of advice for you is that you always see me smiling because smile is the key. Very true. To opening the doors to success. So <laughs> Ijene has a permanent smile right. on her face. I've never seen her without one. Sorry to sorry sorry to come down on you so hard there, Ijene. That was rough. It's fine. All right. Yeah. She's crying. Yeah. But she's yeah. doing it with a smile, you which is what, good. Though? There you go. Tough lessons. Okay. Tough take, lessons. Take those lashings. So I'm gonna I, I need to play a song and get to what you do at the courthouse. Um, and I do need to check my phone while that song is playing. <laughs> One of the rare occasions you'll ever see me check my phone while I'm working. Yeah. I mean, do you even know where it is right now? It's like... in my pocket and it's vibrated three times and now okay. I'm, i have anxiety because I haven't checked it. So <laughs> I'm gonna have to check it. <laughs> 60 seconds away from your Shock Caller question of the day. It's Brooke and Jubal in the morning. By the way, we're streaming the Shock Caller question of the day on Facebook Live right now. If you go to the Brooke and Jubal page on Facebook, you can see it all right there. But before we get into the Shock Caller question of the day, we've been talking a lot about how the current trend for the past, I think, like 15 years Mm. in Hollywood is just to recycle 
and reuse yeah. old ideas for TV shows. <laughs> Nobody wants original anymore. No, 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 no. no. That's a bad word. Jules. Yeah, stay away from those. Just remake everything. That's why in recent years we've got reboots like Fear Factor, Will and Grace, Mammy Vice, DuckTales. I think is being remade too. Oh yeah. Well. Another classic TV show is about to get recycled and reused by the networks. I'm talking about ABC's Lost. Really? That show? What? Whoa. Yeah, there's going to be a new show based on Lost called Castaways. And is it another season where if you miss like one episode, then you can never watch the rest of the season again because you didn't understand what happened? Well, this one's going to be a little different because it's not going to be a scripted show. This time, it's going to be turned into a reality show. And the description says... 12 individuals will be dropped alone on a string of small islands in Indonesia with documentary style flashbacks to their lives back at home before what? leaving for the show. Isn't Producers it? say they'll separate the cast in different locations and soon they'll come to find out that there are others on the island, but they don't know where they are or how many they are. And the show will also simulate an actual disaster scenario. Oh, great. Wow. With contestants left to survive off of washed up luggage, scattered resources, and abandoned structures. Whoa. So, kind of like Survivor, but stranger. And yeah. Then, like mixed with All right. chops. Kind of like, like yeah. mystery baskets. Yeah, mystery baskets mixed with chops. Feed yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Top chef somehow. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Text in at 78592. What other famous scripted shows should they turn into a reality show? All right, let's get into the shot caller question of the day. Young Jeffrey has come in studio with a hat full of names. We'll draw a name out of the hat to see who will put on the shock collar today. They're asked a trivia question. If they get it right, they don't get shocked. Jeff does because he asked a terrible question. If they get it wrong, they get shocked to the song that you want us to sing. Text in at 78592. What song do you want to hear from the person who gets shocked today? Brooke has drawn a name out of the hat because she had the shock collar last. And who'd you get? I got Jubal. Amazing. All right. Grab the shot collar oh, while I'm doing treat. that, Jeff. Please read me the shot caller question of the day. A popular lifestyle magazine recently did a survey asking Americans to share their biggest turnoffs for men and women when going on a first date. Mm. What were the top three most common turnoffs? And as a lifeline, you can ask me about any one, and I'll tell you yes or no if it's in the top three. And it was oh, for men yeah. and women. Yes. Okay. Um, Body odor's got to yeah. be right there at the top, of, yeah. toward the top of the list at least. I think just odor in general. Yeah. A lot like of people aren't bad fans breath, of. Bad odor, bad body. Yeah, stinky people. Smelly. On mm. dates. What about um, being late? That's, that's a what big I was turn off. Say. That's my biggest turn off. Like and that's the one time I'm ever on time is when I'm on a date. And fashionably late, like five ten minutes, cool. Sure, but sure. like forty five minutes. minutes. Oh, yeah, an hour late. It's bad. Um. What about just their clothing? Like you look at them and you're like, ugh. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you wore to a date with me. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> what I about was... what they talk about, too? Like, talking like politics. Or, yeah, or, or, or religion or something. Or just talking. And talking and talking. Yeah, talk, and just, not listening. For me, that's what it is, just talking. <laughs> <laughs> All together. Just like a conversation is annoying. How's your day going? Like, oh, uh, one of these, huh? You're one of those people. <laughs> All oh, right. I know. What about one of the biggest turnoffs being being rude to the wait staff? Or not tipping too, that could be a good one. Yeah. It says a lot about somebody. So are any of these like on your list? You guys are just saying what about, what about, what about? Wh which ones are you saying? Yeah, which one are you locking? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with body odor being one of them for sure. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, Rude to waste staff. I just thought of a really important one that right nowadays is the most important. Being on your phone too much. Oh, yeah. I, oh, I'm yeah. really bad at that, and I have to remind myself, don't touch your phone. You're on a date. You said I could ask you one of them, right? You could ask Is me. the phone one of them? The phone is in the top three. Hey, oh, sweet. That okay. was lucky. <laughs> so I'm going to go with body odor. Not going to go with phone. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. The phone thing is stupid. <laughs> the phone and I read, to read it one more time. Like, that is such a, I red flag. a popular lifestyle magazine recently did a survey asking Americans to share their biggest turnoffs for men and women when going on a first date. What were the top three most common turnoffs? What if it's not looking like your dating profile? Picture. Oh yeah, not looking like your picture could be a big one. All right, I'm going to go with body odor, the phone, and being late. Ooh, I like yeah, I'm going to stick with that, Jeff. 
According to a recent survey from a popular lifestyle magazine, these are the top three turnoffs for men and women when they're going out on a first date. One of them is constantly looking at your phone. Mm. The other is going out with someone who has bad odor or bad hey. hygiene. Okay. Right, here and here the go. third one, biggest turnoff for men and women on a first date is yeah. having bad table manners. Oh. Oh. Like chewing with your mouth open or not saying thank you. Oh, Dang. Okay. man. Uh, and I got it wrong. <laughs> the lyrics to the electric boogie. Ooh. <laughs> Marcia Griffiths or Marcia electric. Griffiths or whatever she went by. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Shot callers ready? Okay, here we go. <clears throat> you gotta know it. It's electric. <laughs> Boogie, woogie, woogie. Yeah. Now you can't hold it. It's electric. electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. <laughs> but you... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, whatever. It's electric. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is also electric. He's literally. Damn, that hurt. Very literal song right now. Moving 92.5. I'm Bradley Johnson with 1-800-DUI-AWAY. Not getting behind the wheel after drinking is the best choice. But if you're pulled over, the next best choice is to call 1-800-DUI-AWAY. It's another Jubal phone tab. And weekday mornings on the 20s. Only on moving 92.5. Hello? Hi, I'm looking for Adam. This is he. Adam, how are you? My name is Seth McElroy. I'm calling from staffing a uh, Tina put you down as a reference on her application. Uh, yes, yeah, she uh, told me you guys might call. Yeah, I just I wanted to ask you a couple questions real quick if you got some time. Sure. Okay, what is your relationship with Tina? She's my girlfriend. Oh, nice, okay. Do you know if Tina's boobs are fake or not? <laughs> Hello? Uh, Hello? Uh, yeah. What business is it of yours? It's very important at our company that we hire people who are honest and genuine. And she never brought up once in her interview if she had a That's boob job. It's not your business. Well, I think it is our business here, sir. I, I don't mean, think it is your business. I can tell that you're getting upset with me, and I don't really understand why. You, you can understand my point here. No, I don't understand your point. Why, why don't you explain it further to me why you need to know her, her uh, breast size? I don't want her breast size, sir. <laughs> I just asked if they were real or if they were fake. I don't care about how big they are. I mean, they're obviously big, but I don't care it, like it, exactly. It doesn't matter. It's an intrusive, inappropriate question. You asked my girlfriend if she had fake boobs for a clerical position? Well... Obviously, I didn't say it in those exact words. I said, is there anything else we should know about you? And then I winked at her. <laughs> and that's, she, Oh, you, know, you winked at her. Okay, you winked at her. And that was her cue to tell you uh, about her boobs. Everybody else has gotten the hint when I do that in interviews. And I've interviewed a lot of women. I find this unbelievable that you would ask if, if my girlfriend's boobs are fake. Yeah, and I told you it'd only take a couple of minutes. It's just a simple yes or no answer. If you give me that, you know I can... You your questions. F*** your questions, dude. Look, I want to pretend that this never, ever f***ing happened. I'm assuming since you won't answer the question, they are fake. <laughs> what does it matter if she has fake boobs or not, man? Oh, I think it matters a whole hell of a lot, sir. <laughs> you know? This is just a sleazy. This has gone to, like, a whole... Hey, hey, you know what? I'll, let me stop you right there. We're both a couple of guys, all right? You can let the whole act off. We're always curious. <laughs> you know? Come on, man. Well, I mean, I need Come to find... On. I Well, but, sir, I, I need to find this out. This is ridiculous. If you could just give me my answer, I'll be on my I way. maintain a business. We run a very successful business here, and all of our employees are very trustworthy. And that's I where this... It hard to believe man that's where this I whole thing hard to believe that's where this whole thing stems from is just a circle of trust and that's first created by knowing if somebody has fake boobs or not you know it's like if you had a fake arm i'd probably want to know not you really. know what no matter what you do no matter what you ask you'll never know if my girlfriend's boobs are fake or not all right i, I you can f off clearly you're not going to give me an answer to my question clearly Unfortunately, then I'm going to need you to let Tina know I'm going to be rescinding the offer. We cannot hire her. So if you could just Good. pass along that message, I'd appreciate it. You'll be hearing from Tina's lawyer in the next 24 hours or so. You know what? Not that I really care, but if she would like to resubmit in the future for a job resubmit? with us. Resubmit? Are you kidding me? I told you, man. You're being dude. You can 
off. You're never going to know the size of her boobs. What if I told you that this was a prank phone call? Then would you tell me if they're real? <laughs> what? Because this is actually Jubal from Brook and Jubal in the Morning on Moving 92.5 doing a phone tap on you. Oh, Oh my God. Your girlfriend Tina set you up. <laughs> oh my God. She emailed me and said that you're protective and might go off if somebody was asking inappropriate questions. <laughs> real quick, though. Hey, serious question. What? Are they real or fake? <laughs> You're never going to know, buddy. <laughs> Wake up every morning with Jubal phone tabs. We Win! Brooks! Fox! All right, Brooke, you're going for 35 wins in a row today. By the way, if you get that 35th win, that ties your second longest winning streak ever. Oh, wow. Okay. And you're going to be playing Candace in Seattle. What's up, Candace? Hey! Whoa. <laughs> just, You're loud this morning. Yeah, you are. Yeah. What did you? What do you do to make that happen for yourself? Uh, double caramel macchiato. Oh my gosh! Oh. That sounds Sugar intense. and caffeine. Yes. I mean, I gotta do that. I'm <laughs> like barely awake this morning. Well, she may crash by the end of this, so yeah. I'm gonna leave the studio and hopefully it happens right in the middle of the game. All right, we're sending Brooke out of the studio. Candace, the game is played like this. You got 30 seconds. <laughs> To answer as many questions as possible. If you don't know one, just say pass, and you have to beat Brooke outright to win, okay? Yes. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Here we go. Your time starts now. What was the number one movie at the box office bringing in $150 million Incredible in its opening two. weekend? Uh, breast augmentation is the most popular plastic surgery in America. What's second? Booty. What is Washington's official state marine mammal? Uh, sea otter. If someone has four babies at once, they're called quadruplets. What do you call five babies at once? Think tucklets. What Warner Brothers character's middle name is Ethelbert, but just shortens it to E? I don't know. Pass. According to Sherman Williams, their best-selling paint color last year was what? I didn't hear it. Uh, I'll say it again because the buzzer was going. According to Sherman Williams, their best-selling paint color last year was what? Uh, maroon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. People didn't hear her freaking out. Sorry. <laughs> All right. We'll bring Brooke back into the studio. So, Candace, what'd you do over the weekend? Did you have a decent weekend? I had a beautiful weekend. I, uh, I actually lucked out and got a five person tent uh, for free at the uh, Columbia City Farmers Market and propped it up and soaked up some sun this weekend. Wow. You just, you just propped it up right there where you got the I tent? I just propped it up. Well, no, not right there. Like Madrona. <laughs> like down at Madrona, that area. Don't even know where that area <laughs> is. But cool. Sounds like it's a good place to put a tent. Sweet. All right. Yeah. Brooke is back in the studio with her headphones on. You ready? Yes. All right. Your time starts now. What movie was number one at the box office bringing in $150 million in its opening week? Uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Breast augmentation is the most popular plastic surgery in America. What is second? Uh, lip injections. What is Washington's official state marine mammal? Uh, orca. If someone has four babies at once, they're called quadruplets. What do you call five babies born at once? Quintuplets. What Warner Brothers character's middle name is Ethelbert, but just shortens it to E? Uh, oh, Bugs Bunny. According to Sherwin Williams, their best-selling paint color last year was what? Gray. What'd you say? Gray. All right, let's send it on over to the scoreboard and see how you guys did with Jose. We'll probably sit around and cook some <laughs> soups and eat bread and desserts and just get all fat and sassy. Melanios. I love that lady, fat and sassy. <laughs> Candace, um, Candace is awesome. I know, Candace loved that Wow, club. I need to drink what you're drinking. Yeah, you uh, you did great. You had good pacing, but you got zero oh, today. Oh, Candace. You got in a lot of questions, too, Brooke. Yeah. Four correct. Ooh, nice Candace job, Brooke. Did not get the money, but it sounds like it doesn't matter to you. That sound clip we used for Jose, I think. <laughs> Made your day. Let's go over the answers. What movie was number one at the box office, bringing in $150 million in its opening weekend? That would be Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Breast augmentation is the most popular plastic surgery in America. Second is a nose job. Mm. Nose job. What is Washington's official state marine mammal? That would be an orca. If someone has four babies at once, they're called quadruplets. If you have five babies born at once, it's quintuplets. Oh, it's hell. The it like hell. Warner Brothers character, whose middle name is Ethelbert, but just shortens it to E, is Wiley Coyote. Oh. I wish oh. they would have left the whole Ethelbert in. It would yeah. Wiley, <laughs> Wiley Ethelbert, Ethelbert Coyote. Coyote. According to Sherwin-Williams, their best-selling paint color last year was gray. Oh.
Oh, everything's nice great right now. <laughs> well, Candice, you didn't win any money, but just for playing today, you got a pair of tickets valued at $400 to the grand opening of the restaurant Ascend Prime Steak and Sushi. Ooh. Enjoy Ooh. panoramic views of the Puget Sound and fireworks displays during their special 4th of July bash nice. called Red, oh. White, and Bellevue. Uh -oh. You'll enjoy incredible food and an open bar and even dancing. Hey. And I don't know you very well, Candice, but I have a feeling you know how to take advantage of an open bar. <laughs> yes, indeedy. So, yes, indeedy. <laughs> enjoy. We'll play Winbrook's Bucks same time tomorrow. Thank you.